Welcome to the beginning of Series 49, everyone. Normally, we'd be doing some sort of shtick for April Fool's Day during this cold open, and that might still show up, uh, but we think this series basically is enough of an April Fool's shtick as we cover a very interesting and very out-of-print game with Jeff and John from System Mastery. Our favorite uh, guests. <laughs> like, we always have such a good time with them, and unfortunately, so this, like, they're... They're like one out of three on good games so far. Yeah. So <laughs> you'll find that out. Yeah. Uh, we we cannot wait until you can hear this one uh, as well as a uh, quite honestly a big role reversal. I wasn't mm -hmm. anticipating um, that. I really hope translates well to audio. It's a twist. Um, Hundred percent <laughs> unplanned, but uh, you'll have to find out by sticking around. So uh, so please do that. Until then. Let's get into our, our announcements. I like that we're like, please stick around, like as if this isn't the opening of the episode. <laughs> and like these people <laughs> didn't open up this podcast to listen to it. It's so true. like if you if you <laughs> fell in by accident, please stay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So first announcements. Um, if you check the date on the calendar for when this episode releases, we just passed our four year podcast anniversary. Um, four years. Happy four years. What is, what is four, four years. years? Is that like? I was planning to look that up before this recording yeah. and I forgot. What is the four year is gift? Is it like wood or something? I don't know. I thought that was, I don't know. Good, good question. Uh, I'm going to Google it right now. Four year anniversary gift. Uh, paper. 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 Hey, character sheets are paper. Character sheets are paper. Oh, Aww, perfect. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get um, you a character sheet for Okay, for I've got our, plenty, thank you though. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um it has been uh poof, what a four years it's been. Uh yeah. Podcast wise, it's been great. Mm -hmm. Um outside world wise, questionable, let's say. Oh, right. Um but yeah, I mean it's that went really fast. Did that go really fast? It well it, it didn't, it didn't. It feels like like the last two years went really fast and the first two years were like forever ago. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I feel like almost the other way around, like the first two years, like we were like doing stuff all that, like, and then like the last two years of just like being trapped inside and well, not doing anything. While um, doing the first two years, it felt like it was really fast. Right. But now it feels like it was forever ago. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. There are times where I'm like, I've been doing this for a lifetime, but I think it's just because the last two years have been a lifetime. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe <laughs> I don't know. It's it's, everything is out of proportion right now. Um, yeah. But it's been it's been a wild few years, like doing things that I never thought uh -huh. I would do, and um, talking to people that I never thought I would get to talk to. Mm -hmm. It's it's been so good. It's been so good. It, including bonus content, we have done over sixty games. At this point. Dang. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, we are just shy of 200 full episodes that yeah. we've done. Um, and that's going to be hitting, I believe, in May. Yeah. Coming up um, on Series 50. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it's wild. It's uh, It's been a roller coaster. And uh, we've hit a lot of good milestones together. And now we're now we're starting year five. Four more years. Four more years. <laughs> it's going to be. It's going to be. A, I mean, at least, right? All right. Um, and I mean, we said that so from the much... beginning. <laughs> that, like, we, we'll never be done. <laughs> we, we, uh, like, when we first started the podcast, we we're like, we've got enough for, like, six years of content here. And uh, mm -hmm. we still have enough for six more years of content. I mean, this um, shelf behind me is all things that have been released in the last year. Yeah, so, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's obviously only some of them. So yeah, there's like there's plenty. There's plenty there's happening. A lot. There's absolutely a lot. Yeah. And like we stick to the systems uh, that we enjoy and we want to learn about and we think are interesting for people to learn about. And uh, and then there's this game. And then there's whatever we did this time. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, like most of the time Honest, we do really great games, and then sometimes we have Jeff and John on. <laughs> Honestly, I was chomping at the bit to to get a hold of this system as well. Uh, that that you'll find out. Uh, Why? Uh, spoiler alert! Why? Uh, if, it because I've been curious. Well, because you needed I, to know, right? It's like I needed like to watching know. a train wreck. Like I had to know yes. what happened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So 
uh, absolutely stick around for that because it's uh, going to be fantastic. But uh, no, I'm really excited. Four years. Yeah. Uh, should we actually announce some things? We probably should. We probably uh, should. Yeah. Now we can get to announcements. Okay. Uh, first up, we want to draw your attention to a couple crowdfunding campaigns that are still going on right now. Uh, one of them, which is Deimos Academy. Uh, this is a game we covered in a spotlight episode last month and is about characters returning to a boarding school under mysterious circumstances for a reunion. And they have to explore the boarding school to unlock its secrets. Um, and the characters have superpowers, uh, which is just a wild twist that yeah, I didn't see just coming. throw that in there. Yeah, but it, it's, it's amazing. So... Uh, this game utilizes a coloring book and paper dolls as part of its mechanics. Uh, and it's really just a lovely looking game uh, with some really great creators behind it. So um, that one's crowdfunding on Kickstarter has a little bit over a week as of the release of this episode. Um, and it's very close to funding as of the recording of this cold open. Yeah. Uh, the other game to check out is Yozeba's Bed and Breakfast. They have smashed through all of their original stretch goals. They're inching their way toward another. Um, this game is another one that we covered in a spotlight episode last month. Uh, it was delightful, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think that is one of the more in the weeds kind of episodes that we've we've had where we just kind of get to pick designers' brains about why they did things. Yeah. Um, but it it was such a fun time. Mm-hmm. You can find that one on Indiegogo, and it is absolutely worth checking out if you haven't yet if you love the slice of life genre it'd be um pretty great to have this giant tome of rpg goodness on your shelf it's it's Mm -hmm. a big book um but they've created it's been created by a bunch of fantastic designers it has um all of these pre-made characters that you get Mm -hmm. to inhabit it's just so cool it's so cool if you don't believe me you can go listen to our episode but if you do believe me you should go check it out (laughs) um we'll put a link to that in our show notes too Absolutely. Uh, And in lieu of time, uh, since we likely got a bit wordy during the anniversary talk, uh, not too bad, but whatever. Yeah. Um, Other announcements. It was important stuff. It was important. Uh, Other announcements normally include our network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast, where you can get bonus content like our latest episode where Amelia recorded character creation for Weird Scouts with her kids. Uh, and also leave a review where you can, because we are out of reviews to read. And finally, uh, do you have questions you'd love to ask us? Uh, we would love to answer them. You can submit questions to us at questions.charactercreationcast.com. We will take the questions and answer them for a special bonus episode to release after our 50th series concludes next month. That is it for announcements, we promise. Thanks for sticking Mm -hmm. with us both through this cold open and for the last four years. Um, And enjoy the first episode of our fifth anniversary of podcasting uh, because Ryan sure didn't. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome back Jeff and John from the System Mastery Podcast to rip the band-aid off and teach us a bit about the Marvel Super Heroes RPG from TSR. That's right, the moment you've all been waiting for, it's face rip time. Welcome back to Character Creation Cast. We are so excited that you're here to talk about more garbage superhero games. I mean, we did have that one that was really good. Sentinels was admittedly very good. Oh, I thought you were talking about Heroes Unlimited. Heroes Unlimited. (laughs) Yes, Heroes Unlimited, the one good game. Yeah, no. (laughs) No, I'm super excited to have you guys back, too. We're excited to be here. I can't wait to talk about it. 
I like that you're only allowed to be here to discuss superhero games, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> I only somehow. want to be here to discuss superhero <laughs> I was going to suggest something else, but we actually had a, a bit of a network confluence of events that led us to need a superhero game again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to you want to talk about that event real quick uh, at the top of the show? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I would love to recommend exactly why we're here. It's the Miracle Monday Super Stream, a superheroic tabletop role playing game fundraiser for Trans Lifeline. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, that's going to be happening May 16th of this year. Uh, and it's going to be run by Jeff Stormer. It's going to be hosted on the One Shot Network Twitch channel. Mm hmm. And uh, the goal is to raise some money for Trans Lifeline. We need that uh, more than ever right now as trans rights are under attack all across the country and Absolutely. all across the world beside, uh, besides. So Trans Lifeline, a great charity. That's the one that uh, System Mastery, whenever we run charities, we always uh, donate to them as well. So this mm -hmm. is perfect for us. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be a whole series of APs, both live and pre-recorded. Uh, that are going to be streamed throughout the day as Jeff Stormer, probably with some help from other network folks, uh, help to raise more and more money uh, to help Trans Lifeline. Absolutely. And once again, that's May 16th. Uh, I don't have a, a time for when it starts during the day yet, but uh, stay tuned. Keep your eyes on it because it will be announced several times over Twitter and other One Shot Network shows. Yeah, and we'll, we'll definitely announce it Yeah, on, on ours uh, as well. So keep a tab on our our System Mastery's Twitter and, uh, and Jeff Stormer as well. Jeff's probably going to be pushing it pretty decently when it gets around that point so uh that's mm -hmm. he's at uh, party of one pod on twitter as well mm -hmm. very cool but i can i can talk about what i normally talk about because that stuff i can spool off on a, uh, at a dime's request yes absolutely so let's pretend that people have not listened to our other fantastic superhero game episodes can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what sure. kind of projects you have going on yeah, uh, well, I'm one of the two hosts of System Mastery, uh, which John is the other host. Uh, our show has been around for nearly nine years, maybe nearly ten. Nearly you know, ten. Nearly ten years. Wow. We, we we go dig up old role-playing games from wherever we can find them, from any point in role-playing game history, and uh, we try to find ones that no one's ever heard of and find out why. Like, what, what, went, <laughs> what went wrong? What's weird about it? Uh, sometimes we find good games. Most of the time we find forgettable stuff. Sometimes we find mm. just the worst and it's a lot of fun uh, we also do a movie review which works similarly and some star wars book reviews which also work similarly mm -hmm. uh, there you but go. In, in terms of the current project and i'll leave the movie and star wars stuff to john because he's got to say something uh, yeah. we've got our, our our newest project here which i'm holding up for the zoom call and not for the listeners uh mm -hmm. our our new cookbook oh there you go yeah uh, this is going to come out in April, which is the, the reason I'm pushing it so heavily. This is uh, the Dungeon Meister cookbook. It's our fourth book and our first time writing an actual recipe guide. It's got Ooh. 75 party recipes for getting a, uh, a, a game table ready for game night. Oh, wow. Well, it's nice because the, these episodes are coming out in April, too. So, yeah, perfect uh, timing. Go, go check it out. Yeah, absolutely. So that should be available already on Simon and Schuster or, or Amazon or wherever you go to find it. And uh it's just the thing I'm super excited about right now that we've. <laughs> so I have to believe. ask, what is yeah. your favorite recipe, like your personal favorite recipe in there? My favorite recipe in that book is my the one I make all the time, which is teriyaki pulled pork sliders with a oh. uh, Thai peanut slaw on. Uh, oh, like man. Japanese style sweet rolls. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. Oh. Now I'm really hungry. There's really yeah. good stuff in there. I mean, look at the covers. <laughs> it's way better than the hostess the donuts and, I just ate. Eggs Benedict hamburger. Oh, oh wow. my God. <laughs> so there's so much cool stuff in there so that's what i'm that's my that big project amazing at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh john how about yourself yeah well you know <laughs> i'm also host. i'm said. here too hey, I, didn't, I didn't say a single thing about movie mastery <laughs> also john is here i'm also here i'm helping <laughs> uh but yeah, we've got, of course, all of our other stuff that isn't role-playing game related. Uh, as he mentioned, we've got our Star Wars novel discussion where we go through old Star Wars legends that is no longer canon and thank yep. every single god that it is not anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're, in, we're in the middle of I, Jedi right now. Oh, Ooh. I've heard and some things about that one. It's interesting. It is. It is definitely <laughs> a cornhorn book. It sure is a book someone wrote. <laughs> Uh, and we've got our movie mastery where we go through movies uh, that are all selected by the audience. I have a giant list of like 200 movies 
and I just randomly select one every time we do one. Yep, it's all done by user submission. We don't pick oh, any wonderful. We just randomly let users pick them for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, which, wow. which just let us to see some weird stuff. <laughs> I, well, yeah, because the audience wants us to watch just the worst garbage that's imaginable. Yes. Because yeah. that's our whole deal. I mean, I was going to say, do you ever wonder, like, what did I do to you to deserve this? Oh, I made a podcast. Or are you just like, years the of content that I put out is enough to, like, deserve this on its own. Ha- has somebody ever sent you, like, a gem like, that's, like, really great? that nobody's ever heard of uh, people love to recommend that we watch good movies and kind of uh, uh, frame it as a treat because they do want us to have a ni- like our fans like us so they want us to yeah. have a nice time <laughs> so when there's you know your choice between will smith's pursuit of happiness and black panther in studios at the same time they'll send us to, the, to black panther because they're like these guys need a break right <laughs> yeah <laughs> times are hard <laughs> so so that does happen we get we get a lot of compassion from our from our listeners yeah oh, that's, that's nice, nice. John, and, uh, what is your favorite recipe in the book? Oh, I don't know. Okay, great. <laughs> John, John can't pick one. Great. I can't. I couldn't possibly narrow it down. I do like the mimic cookies. I love all my children equally. <laughs> the yep. mimic cookies are kind of fun. There's yeah, just like chip. googly eye cookies. It's great. Yeah. Chip cookies that look like they're mimics. I mean, oh, honestly, amazing. you put googly eyes on anything, it makes it better. Like, yeah. That's just it took science. me all the way until we were halfway done with the editing to go, wait a minute, mimics don't even have eyes. And then we were like, yeah, but they look cooler if they do. Yeah. <laughs> I just, now I'm picturing a bunch of adventurers going around slapping googly eyes on mimics, and that just tickles me. Yeah, it's just yeah. go real carefully so they don't wake up. You don't want to get the treasure or anything. You just want to give them some googly eyes. Uh-huh. Right. And then the next adventurer that comes by and is like, ooh, a treasure chest with googly eyes. And then it opens its mouth and you're like, oh, my God, that's terrifying and hilarious. I love the idea that they walk up and go, well, that can't possibly be a mimic. Mimics don't have googly eyes. (laughs) It must be a treasure chest. (laughs) Perfect. But speaking of years of entertainment. Mm-hmm. To to go to the Marvel phase rip and bring it back around. Ooh. This was our pilot episode that oh. we did when we were. It's the the unreleased one. This is the game that we practiced being a podcast on. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. We had no idea what we were doing. We recorded on two gaming headsets on two computers in the same room. Oh and no. You could, we could hear each other on the sound <laughs> on the tracks. <laughs> it just it was a because. I was just, I remember what, what happened was I was, I liked movie podcasts and I was like, Hey John, let's make a podcast. And he was like, okay. And then he just came over with stuff and we didn't Google it or anything. We were just like, this is, <laughs> this is probably how it works. <laughs> how that hard could it be? makes me feel slightly better about our practice episodes. Um, <laughs> like we, we practiced on D and D, which we ended up releasing as our first episode, but it was, they were so long and they were so slow and like, we had no chemistry and no charisma and like because Ryan and I Ryan and I didn't know each other before we started podcasting um we were just like two people who met on the internet and we're like yeah podcasting how hard can it be I'm like <laughs> <laughs> so I mean they just sound they sound so bad they sound so bad I, we terrible. had the same problem in our I mean we knew each other very well but our our um our earliest episodes are all us being very very serious they're they're we we, we hadn't yet figured out that this this could be fun so most of the episodes were like the reason that Heroes Unlimited is a bad game. And it was just also we kept rolling dice on air, which we were not doing right. Oh, man, the early days. I, I'm, I'm remastering the first series right now. And um, honestly, it's not it's not as bad as uh, as I think it was uh, oh, like good. we're 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 pretty bad. But our guests are amazing. Yeah, they saved and, it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to getting to the, re-release those and, and hopefully sound a little better. Yeah, we just re-recorded our episode zero, too, because it uh, like I was like, if this is the first thing in our feed and the first thing that people are hearing, like, no. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, uh, podcast. <laughs> we should make a podcast. <laughs> uh, shall we go ahead and, and get into this, dive into this game and, and, and start discussing what this game is? is all about what's in a game oh, i think yeah. we should yeah actually let's not you know what okay, yeah, i'm no, really tired mind. forget it yeah <laughs> Too late i now. want i want to know uh what what the core concept of marvel superheroes is huh interesting and hard <laughs> to explain <laughs> uh i mean it's uh trying to be superheroes now 
It does have the ability to let you just play as various Marvel superheroes yeah, that are established if you want. Happily sell you big books of nothing but named heroes with their stats all done already. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, there is. I don't, oh, know, yeah. I don't know why I'm surprised. I shouldn't be surprised. Well, like, it's it's Marvel don't... and they want to recreate Marvel. Yeah. So, yeah. Plus, yeah, I suppose you know, that's you... the reason you pick a Marvel superhero game over some other. Yeah, yeah you want to be able to look at various heroes and go like, oh, now I can definitively point at who's stronger and whatnot and get my nerd discussions out of the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Uh, the, the game, it's TSR, so it really does want to kind of create a simulated world that is where you could easily play as anything from anything in Marvel Comics. Mm-hmm. From, from the, the, oh, yeah, the, the range lowest. for things goes from like, Ah, Aunt May to the Beyonder. Yeah. <laughs> now, in terms of the way that, the, that it enforces gameplay, it definitely has a really strong moral component that feels kind of out of date, um, where you lose XP for things like causing property damage or stopping a villain from causing property damage, or failing to stop a vis- villain from causing property damage. Uh, okay, so this has nothing to do XP. with the cinematic universe and like the Battle of New York or whatever. No, like, no this, not. Is, this predates a lot of that. The, okay. the, uh, this book's like 10 years older than The Winter Soldier. Yeah. Oh, it's like 20 years older. 20 years older. Would he come around in the 2000s? Oh, yeah. Okay. Winter Soldier is very late. All right. Yeah, so so it's uh, it, it's an it's an older book, but it definitely has the same kind of moral uh, moralizing structure you see in a lot of old TSR stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's just, you know, would you like to play as Spider-Man? Here's how it works. Here's all the powers that Spider-Man has broken down to the tiniest and most minute mathematical details. Or you could make your own character and be nowhere near as good as Spider-Man. Well, yeah, Spider-Man's <laughs> got too many powers. <laughs> so as far as setting, are you playing in like the Marvel universe or mm-hmm. are you playing in like, you know, regular new york or well you know i can't stop you so if you want to run the game in like regular new york (laughs) then then you can but okay but it's tsr so actually we do need to follow the rules 100 (laughs) percent. that's right someone will show up jeff grubb will come to your house yeah and he'll bring his friend dune buggy doug uh (laughs) which is a real person who gets referenced in the book (laughs) (laughs) I'll get into it in a minute. Uh, okay. But yeah, the idea is that you're supposed to be playing in like Marvel, New York. So, you know, at, at any point you could be like, well, I'm going to stop doing whatever we're doing now and go to the Baxter building and meet the Fantastic Four. Uh, that kind of thing is supposed to be possible. You're playing in the Marvel world. Okay. So you could like potentially run into these superheroes that you can buy yes. the extra books for that yeah, your GM sure will then use to like kill you or something I don't know. oh yeah i mean if you want to get stats for dr doom and how he will destroy you that's great you can go get that yeah awesome yeah I, the idea is basically i mean i'm sure that's a selling point to be like yeah when you make your character even if you make jimmy the firefighter that is not a marvel character he could still meet the human torch and fight him because he's fire <laughs> get out of here fire <laughs> Amazing. I will punch fire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I want to punch fire. <laughs> I'm fire puncher. <laughs> so what what sort of tools and, and materials then would, do we need to, to actually play this game? Well, one of the nice things about this game is that it's been out of print for forever. And yeah. for yeah, whatever, it's very nice that it's been out of print. Well, I mean, <laughs> We're that's paved the way for other Marvel games, <laughs> none of which are very good. But uh, what I was going to get at is, the thing that's nice about it is that it's all just been made free over the years. It's not hard to get. You can just Google that you would like it. And so uh, a list of every PDF that ever existed for it will be available fully for free. It's not like I'm talking about the Trove or whatever. This game has been kind of released to the public. So it's very easy to get the books. Beyond that, uh, it can be a little harder to find character sheets, but not impossible. There is one in the core book. And you'll also need percentile dice. All right. All right. Also a pencil and friends. Uh, and some pizza. Maybe uh, a pizza or two. Or maybe, perhaps, uh, a specific cookbook, especially yes. made for game nights. Or some something. of the recipes from my fine cookbook with yeah. savory pull-apart <laughs> monkey breads. And, yeah. Or instead of friends and a pizza, you could have enemies and a burger. <laughs> uh, Why not you. try my Whoever fig mascarpone say. tart with honey? So what kind of themes is this game meant to explore obviously it does superhero stories and it sounds like it particularly leans toward being the good guy 
Oh, yeah. Um, but are you, you know, like I think about like masks and stuff. It is a lot about exploring like, you know, the team dynamic and stuff. And a lot of these older games are, I would say not. Maybe. So this has an interesting way to enforce team dynamics. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. I'm excited. So unfortunately, this is a game where, uh, you know, a lot of games have the kind of like brownie point. You can spend things to like re-roll or make uh, an ability better. And it has the same thing, except that's also your XP. So you're spending your XP in order to do things, mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh, which is terrible. And you can create a pool of that, uh, the karma in this game. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a team, you can be like, all right, we pool karma as a team so that as a team, we can do various things. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can only belong to one team at a time because this is before Wolverine was on everything. Yeah. Yeah. And (laughs) of course, there is also a, I would say a giant section of this book given over to outfitting your layer. Yes. And be like, ah, yes, finally, how much resources will I need for the dinette set? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is interior decorating an important part of this game? Because I was yes. not about oh, it before, but why, now I'm here for this. Just, why does this say, game sound more and more amazing? Everything yeah, you say about it. Like, to be clear, <laughs> interior decorating is a large portion of the book. I, I would mean, not say it's a large it, portion of the gameplay experience. <laughs> if, if you assume that page count equals importance, it is very yeah, important. It is like a third of the book. <laughs> is, but it if not, you're like, is that not how games work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Basically, it, it's it's kind of like playing The Sims in the middle of the book. Uh, but to, to finish up the team's <laughs> idea, yeah, uh, karma is the game's XP resource. You can spend it on short form things like, oh, I need to I need to get plus thirty on this roll, or I'll fail and I won't punch the green goblin. So you could just spend thirty karma to get plus thirty to your thing, or you could save it forever and buy a power for like seventeen hundred karma. Uh, and when you're in a team, you can be like, well, I give 15% of all the karma I earn to the team pool. Uh, so eventually Colossus and Wolverine can learn to do the fastball special. But there's so many hindrance. That's all it does. There's no mecha- there's no representation of what that actually looks like. Like what mm. giving some of your karma to the team is in ga- in in story terms. Yeah. Uh, you, you can always pull out and walk away from a team by taking your current percentage of the karma pool. And if you kill anyone... Your karma is automatically set to zero because that's the most heinous possible act. And right. if you're on a team, their karma is all set to zero, too, because they're associated with a murderer. Oh, oh. That, that's kind of interesting, actually, because, you know, like uh, games like Heroes Unlimited. It, yeah, <laughs> you, you could just take your, you know, 50 caliber heavy machine gun in class four armor and, and gun down a bunch of goons for no reason as a hero. Uh, because yeah, it was a game, Marvel. it was a game of numbers. But yeah, it it really because there there was no consequences aside from oh well maybe you'll get in trouble with the law blah 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 blah. <laughs> but right. like this sounds like a real like negative mechanical reinforcement of don't do say, things that heroes don't do. Yeah, the one this thing is I Marvel, w- and we do not want you to be the Punisher. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The problem is that mechanically, it it's a little like I get the idea that yeah, having a, a mechanic in the game to kind of reinforce the don't kill rules so you can play a little more like Spider-Man uh, is is interesting. Uh, and I, I think it is, but I feel like it might be a little too black and white because, again, mm. this is the world where the you can, you can just buy the Punisher in one of these books and plays the Punisher. He will never gain exp- experience. <laughs> <laughs> he can't because well, every time he kills a goon. Good, so. But he's, he's a solo. He, he starts out amazing and he's he's a solo uh, individual a that never teams up because he's too edgy. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. funny that we've... <laughs> It's funny that we've immediately horned in on the karma mechanic because there's so much to it that kind of is the first thing you want to skip when you're playing this game. Uh, for example, <laughs> the uh, the I think, it's, I think it's the game master, the GM, is encouraged to be like uh, tricky and mess with you. So if you're playing a Spider-Man, let's just use him as an example, and you want to go out and fight, I don't know, Scorpion. And when you do that, oh, no, you're going to miss a date with Mary Jane. Well, you think, OK, that's a neat concept. That's like uh, you have to make a decision. Maybe there's going to be a dramatic penalty down the line. Maybe you need to have a secondary scene where you explain what happened to Mary Jane. Or you could just lose 75 karma for not <laughs> making one of your commitments. Like if you had to skip school that day because you were fighting someone in the in uh, out, out in Manhattan, you could lose 100 karma. Interesting. 
So the game That's encourages so you to unsatisfying. do this. Satisfying. <laughs> the game encourages the DM to do this to be like, well, okay, Tony, you've got a meeting with Stark Industries today, but oh no, the Mandarin is attacking. What are you gonna do? And you're like, <laughs> okay, I know you are gonna tell me I lose karma for missing the meeting but how much karma do i lose for just letting the mandarin blow stuff up <laughs> also like why am i playing a superhero game to go to a meeting like i'm playing a superhero game to do superhero things mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can kind of see the logical outgrowth of what that kind of play structure wouldn't would uh suggest yeah. which is that the best thing to possibly play is like oh my character's a loner orphan uh, he's a robot who was created yesterday he has no ties <laughs> and no job and when he's not fighting crime he turns off right and even though he doesn't have any parents he's still an orphan <laughs> yeah. he was programmed to be an orphan but then you get a you get a growth arc of now he's made friends you reject uh, them you're just like i cannot have friends no. friends so are a liability too like what how how often are people willing to really like pool their karma? Like I would think that people would be like, no, thank you. <laughs> well, the problem is there's no incentive to do it because yeah. it's not like, Oh, if you put, you know, points into the pooled karma, you get a bonus. Like if you put 10 in there, you get an extra point or something. Yeah. There, it'd be nice if there was a percentage jump, but instead it's just, Oh, yeah, you can put it in the shared karma. What does that do? It means someone else might use your karma. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, and or also someone like, else might kill someone and it goes right, away. Right, you lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, I, I, I mean, ultimately, I played this game a lot when I was a kid. Like, this was one of my two or three games growing up. Uh, and I, I only learned about the karma mechanic when we did, we did this book for our 200th episode. Because as a kid, we just ignored it. We, like, read through it. We we're like, that looks incredibly bad and <laughs> just <laughs> refuse to engage with it oh yeah that hmm hmm it's no. interesting though yeah i mean it's interesting there's certainly as a, uh, a a thing to examine as a design tool when you look at you know the, the mid 80s the idea of a morality enforcer beyond just the dm telling you your alignment changes or whatever mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's innovative for the time period that it came out in. It's not good. It's a halting step towards things like, you know, we, we met, uh, Amelia mentioned masks earlier, mm -hmm. uh, which is a game that is uses superheroes primarily as a way to examine the lens of like adolescent and personal growth. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a game that uses superheroes to examine superheroes. Uh, but you do see some of these morality, uh, bits here and there that are going to grow into something bigger in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I do think that like the shared pool of karma is like an it's an interesting thing and i think a thing that we we see more and more now of like being able to share some of your points with other people and being able to help out the team and and that kind of stuff it just seems like it was poorly executed oh yeah at this you see point all the because time. it's like the first time we've really you know like D, &D doesn't really have much other than like inspiration i guess like to yeah, really no. well, yeah. help or like make your team work yeah. And you go yeah. back to first edition back in or, or maybe even second edition. Um, and, and there's a lot of things back there that just aren't used anymore because they, they weren't the greatest mm -hmm. sort of mechanics. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you got to start somewhere and you, you know, they, they didn't invent like, you know, the, the narrative style PBTA games back in the eighties easily. And right. Yeah. Looking at this, the lens of like modern gaming, really bad looking at it is like, this is a game that came out in 1986. Okay. That's like a little bit different. We're, yeah, we're yeah. talking like a whole different little set bit, of little bit more standards. Lenient. My, my yeah. whole experience with AD and D the first edition is that it's the biggest book ever written just to settle a bunch of arguments. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's what it feels like. They were playing D and D for like four years and Gygax got so mad at people suggesting alternative rules or or making things he or suggesting things he didn't like that he was like you know what i'm going to write an entire game i'm going to call it advanced and it's going to shut you all up yeah now <laughs> now you know what the rule really is and from then on yeah. D, D nerds have never argued or complained <laughs> right right that settled it he's all like you think Problem your level should be level 20 because he's 200 years old here's here's level caps deal with it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know what when you make the game you can do that <laughs> yeah, I, yep. I'm glad Rules as Written has universally become accepted as, you know, the thing that you always have to do. Exactly. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, absolutely. I know of at least one game where there's a rule in the book that says if anyone deviates from Rules as Written, then the players are allowed to rebel against the GM. 
You can overthrow the government. Yes, you can. Yeah. You can overthrow the GM <laughs> if he if he breaks any of the book's rules for any oh, reason. Wow. <laughs> well, it's written in the book, so it is. I, I like I like the rules in books that say, "Hey, if you don't like the rules in this book, you can change them," and then everything as rules is written. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Heavy. Mind yeah, blown. It makes you think. I see, like I know the purpose of those statements in books, but on the other hand, I'm also like, if you're gonna put that in your book, then why did you write this book in the first place? Cop like, out. why did you bother to write it down if you're just gonna be like, I don't know, do what you want? Like, I understand the purpose of it, but in my head, there's a little voice that's like, this is stupid. <laughs> that's on me, though. That's fine. <laughs> So uh, what do characters, uh, we talked about a little bit, what do characters actually do uh, in this game? Like what, what are the nitty gritty like? They do daring do. They do, uh, they, they swing from the tallest of buildings and catch thieves just like flies. It, it sounds like you've got mundane stuff too that you. Yes. Yeah. The, the, uh, the basic premise of the game is, is that they really want to focus in on Marvel in the seventies and eighties had kind of a, no perfect heroes, everyone has flaws, everyone has a secret identity thing that, I mean, we're talking about the era where they gave Thor a secret identity, like, oh, yeah. little, it was just like 10 years <laughs> earlier, but they did, like, where they were like, uh, I don't know, you're Donald Blake, normal human doctor. Yeah. Um, Sometimes just, people tell me comic stuff, and I'm like, are you lying to me, or no? <laughs> Yeah, for a long time he thought he, he forgot he was Thor, and and the uh, the gimmick of the comic wasn't that he was just Thor, but rather that he turned into Thor when he tapped his cane on the ground and said some code phrase. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, it was basically I, a magical girl at that point. Yes. Yeah. Um, and eventually they were like, "No, you." Not you're... everything is a magical girl, Ryan. <laughs> I I'm gonna stand on my hill and say Thor is a magical girl. I, I don't think I can argue with you. Even the concept of Thor can be handed down from one person to the next, which I feel like matches the magical girl concept uh -huh. fairly, fairly neatly. Absolutely. D don't yeah. encourage him. <laughs> I'm just saying the next Thor is, you know, Jane what, uh, Foster. Jane Foster. Jane Foster, so, Foster yeah. And she's not the next Thor. She's Thor. Like, yeah. That, yeah. Thor's a title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so it, it, it tracks. It really does. Dang it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> The thing you do in this game are 80 superhero things, which is to say a lot of time spent a on lot personal. Of sorry, a lot, yeah, Lots 80 of superhero yeah. things. Yeah, uh, but no, it's like a lot of time spent on personal uh, soap opera style, personal life developments and so on. Mm. A lot of time spent hanging around in team headquarters, having quippy arguments with other superheroes. And then also, yeah, going out and fighting supervillains. Yeah. Saving the world mm -hmm. yeah. or, or the universe uh, in. Uh, I, I was looking at some of the stuff in the advanced uh, guide mm -hmm. and it's like they've got powers that span light years. And I'm like, this is this is just ridiculous. Yeah, they like really I said, wanted they've to got cat ratings for everything from uh -huh. anime strength up to the beyonder just rewriting reality. So, yeah. I so mean, let's talk about team balance. <laughs> well, <laughs> as a character that you make in this, you are very limited you are mm -hmm. not going to reach up to those like cosmic level powers so you don't generally need to worry about that that's going to okay. be saved for things like galactus fair okay that's good to know though that you can't start off that way though like oh no yeah yeah that's mostly there because the whole idea is that the game represents the full diaspora of what 1980s marvel looked like which means you have to go all the way from you know, feeble, like Arnim Zola head stuck in a computer so he can't even move to, you know, someone who has eternity, who has absolute power over absolutely everything. Mm. So, like, is that frustrating as a player, though? Because, like, it's not like every superhero, like, starts out as, like, a baby superhero and then is, like, all powerful. Like, no, some not... are just, like, lame and some are, like, world defying, like. Well, the nice thing about Marvel is that there does tend to exist kind of tiers of where team power exists. Yeah. Like your average team is going to be, you know, the X-Men, most of them have one or two powers. Right. Uh, and they work together well as a team. If you were to say like, well, but they exist in the same universe as the Sentry, who is basically a Superman analog. How's that fair? And it's like, well, he, he's not in their stories very often. And when he is, he's more of an existential threat than a guy that they have to punch. Mm -hmm. Right. But the... The way that the book does it, as far as balancing, is uh, you roll on a table because this book loves 
random tables, <laughs> tables. almost as much so as I do. Dis- so I do mean, we. honestly, so far, this is the third superhero game that we have covered with you, and every one of them has involved random rolls on a table to make I characters. And I'm to. so excited about it. <laughs> like, seriously, everything you're saying about this game just makes it sound better and better. Oh, yeah. Now, you... <laughs> we were told that this was going to be a bad game, and so far... <laughs> Now, when you create your character, obviously they're like, oh, if you want, you can just pick from these lists rather than roll. But why would you ever do that? Right. Right. But you'll roll to see what type of background you have. So you might be a mutant or you might be a altered human. So you're like, oh, I've got a super soldier serum. I'm, you know, Steve Rogers. Uh, You could be an alien or a robot or whatever. Mm. And then whatever your background is, you take that and roll on a table to figure out what your stats are. And that's got basically a range that you can roll within. (laughs) And that means you're never going to, like, even if I roll on my D100 a 100 and I get the best I can get, you're never going to get to the point where you're like, oh, I'm, you know, punching like as if I was a god. You're like, no, you might, might, if you have the right background and the best rolls, get to like close to Hulk ish level strength, Mm -hmm. but there's never going to be like, Oh, I punched through a planet or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because, and I, (laughs) all of the stats in this are names instead of just numbers. Well, they're both, Mm -hmm. but you can get up to monstrous Mm -hmm. is the highest you'll ever get in a stat in Mm. this as a starting character in the core book. Yes. And, (laughs) uh, most of the people will go from, you know, if you're just like a regular human, like or augmented human, because there is no such thing as a regular human in this game, not, not yeah. the core book, uh, then, you know, you'll be like, oh, I can roll from feeble to incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you might not even get up to the higher echelons that some of the other things could get, like aliens can get monstrous in certain categories and things. But yeah. Yeah. Because it, it past monstrous is unearthly, and then it goes to a shift X, Y, Z, and then yeah. CL 1,000, 3,000, then the top tier, CL 5,000. Yeah. So uh, s- which <laughs> totally makes sense. Well, yeah, class, that's the uh, regular order for yeah. things to go so, in. So shift X, Y, and Z are called that because of the mechanic of the game called column shifting, where for one role, you can be like, well, I'm normally at incredible, but... For this role, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be at amazing, so I have to roll three column shifts to the right on the on the big resolution chart. Oh. So shift X, Y, and Z are supposed to represent like if you're already at the top, like if you're already at monstrous or amazing or whatever's at the top, and you get a column shift two, you go to shift Y because it's they they didn't think of names for them, and then because they just kept writing books, <laughs> uh, class one thousand through five thousand are for characters like Galactus and Uatu yeah. the Watcher. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. Oh, goodness characters gracious. you would never actually interact with. All right, so now that now that it sounds like there's math involved uh, with matrices and and whatnot, yeah, for uh, sure. things are looking a little less uh, good for the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't you go ahead and start by turning to the very very just scroll to the back of the book, the bottom of the PDF, and find the chart of resolution. You're gonna oh, want to rotate sideways. it if you can do that. Ah! It is. It oh. is. It is. Uh, it's a thing. Why is there a periodic table? And yeah, note that it even has lactonite and, and antonide tables at the top. <laughs> and oh. that's that's going to be how you figure out whether or not you did something and how well you did something. There's a, per, there's a percentile dice. <laughs> what? Yeah. Why is, is there percentile dice? Do I need to reference a chart? Okay, so here we go. <laughs> every single different <laughs> named rating has a different success level. Yeah. So sure, let, me just, yeah. let me just describe this to people really quick. Uh, okay. It is a big rectangle with a secondary rectangle attached to one side for the really, really high level power stuff uh, with gradient shades of green, yellow and red running throughout. And those are degrees of success. So, for example, if your character, you would cross reference your current stat. Let's say your character is good at fighting and they have the good rank in fighting. You would look at the good column. And when you make your percentile roll, which is the the vertical axis you can see on there. Yeah. Uh, let's say you rolled a 40 uh, or a 56. Let's say a 56. You would cross-reference those two lines, uh, go down to 56, go over to good, and see that you rolled a green result. So you have a moderate success, 
Uh, then yellow and red are, you know, su- uh, increasing severity of successes. Yeah. So what that means is with column shifts, let's say that you tried to punch uh, some guy who can slow down time in a field around him. So his power is that when you move in to punch him, you get column shifted one to the left or column or minus one column shift because your punch is automatically weaker. So oh. now when you roll, instead of looking at the good column, you would look at the typical column and all of a sudden you fail the roll. Oh, Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it's not difficult to read. It's yeah. you know, it's just one what, of those like s- this feels superfluous. Like, why don't you like, just say you, you take not, a minus ten? Like, yeah, and you can't just like automatically know all of the cross. Yes. Well, you just you have to have the chart. The main problem is you look at the number breakdown, and it's not really broken down in a normal like oh every you know two or three oh, or five or whatever no. one it breaks and numbers. then two to three four to six seven to ten eleven to fifteen yeah 16 to 20 by fours for 21 a while. to 25 <laughs> and then once it hits 75 then it's it's got a bell curve in the percentile die chart <laughs> wow but it's a really oh. shallow bell curve. Yeah, because the high end and the low end both are much tighter. Yeah. And then the mid range are all within fours. But it's one of those things where you can't just go, oh, every 10% is a whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, if I roll a 35, I have to sit there and think, where does that fall? So yeah. you I always need to chart standard open. Standard deviations yeah. of the expected percentage. <laughs> It, it seems like a hundred is always the 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 best you can get, no matter where you're at, though. So that that's nice, at least. And then a one <laughs> is always a miss. <laughs> yes, so, yes, we're rolling nothing, up nothing percentile the, dice. A hundred seems good. <laughs> well, you would think that huh. there could potentially be like, oh, you know, I have laser punches, so I add plus thirty to my percentile roll. That is that that's never the case. It, instead, it always moves around on the column chart and not on the actual number. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, uh, and but the, also, goodness. You can see up above the roll chart when you look at the like fighting agility things up here for different types of attacks, what it means if you get a green, yellow or red. Mm -hmm. So like a green just means you actually hit. But when you get yellow and red results, you can do interesting things like, oh, I can do a slam attack or I can stun someone. And a lot of them have kill as a result in red. Mm, oh. yeah. Now you can ignore that. You can say like, oh, that is you may slam or kill or do yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah. OK. So you don't just be like, cool, I use a sword because I'm a cool like swordsman. And oops, I rolled red and murdered a guy <laughs> and I lose all my karma. I rolled really uh-huh. well. Oh. Oh, but I t- too oh, well. No. Oops. Oops, I done killed a guy. Now, the yeah. other problem with this table is that it in the 80s, you pretty much had to have the book because no one had color printers. And as you can probably oh, guess, this yeah. doesn't Xerox very nicely. No. Because looking at green, yellow, and red when they're converted to grayscale, is they're all gray. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh-huh. so this thing uh-huh. really forced you to not only have the book, but to have it out on the table where everyone could look at it because yeah. no one was going to memorize this thing. It's, you it's very know interesting that there too. was some guy who did, though. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure there were people who took is. graph paper and recreated it with highlighters. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. It's it's funny because like grappling and escaping on a green is still a miss. Hmm. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah, this is one I of those old like games this. where a moderate success can still be a failure. I, I'm kind of into this. It's it's <laughs> of course weird. You are. I know, <laughs> but I'm kind of really in. summed up our. <laughs> yeah, you're. Gonna, <laughs> mm. uh, dear listeners, we'll have to put a, a picture of this on our, our Twitter for you. Yeah. Or you can um, just go find the, the player's book for Marvel superheroes because yeah. it's free and everywhere. And yeah. it's on the back of the book. Ooh, oh, it's yeah. wild. This is sure is a thing. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to get that out there so you could get a sense of what rolling is like. Um, and, and it gives you, you when you're looking at the top line of the chart, you'll see that the, the shift zero, feeble, poor, typical, good. Uh, you'll see a number in that col- the column at the bottom. Mm. When you are rolling your stats, uh, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to use that number. So even if you roll like a, a 52 on the chart for your character stat tells you that that gives you a remarkable. You're not going to write down 52. You're going to write down, I think, 26. Uh, well, well, 52 mm. would give you amazing. So. 
Oh, uh, well, okay, yeah, I suppose that's depending on which chart you're rolling on, right? <laughs> right, because because uh, there's five, there's four different charts in there for mo- for mutants and altered humans and. Aliens. Oh no, I'm saying rank range. Oh the yeah, rank no. range. If you are within I'm talking eight about to fifteen, creation. you are good, and so on. No, I know. I'm talking about character creation. In character <laughs> creation, uh, you're going to write down the minimum number for that rank to give you something to grow on because you can, when you upgrade a stat, you spending karma to do so, you don't just buy another rank. You don't go like, well, I'm going to spend 50 karma to move from amazing to monstrous. You you instead say, I'm going to spend 50 karma to move from 63 under monstrous to 72 under monstrous. And someday I'll make it to 88 and move to unearthly. Oh, which won't happen. You will never do that. No, that'll never happen. This game's XP costs are, so wildly mismanaged that it, oh. you're, you're, you're just never going to level anything. So like Heroes Unlimited. Yeah, it's very, it's I mean, very similar. You make a hero and you're basically set. I mean, the big difference with Heroes Unlimited is that you're done when you finish your character creation. That's like yeah. just assumed. There's there's not really a mechanic to get more powers. Here there is, but it's it's aspirational. It's like how you can see the go-kart when you're mm. getting tickets at the Chuck E. Cheese. It's you're all like, about that hand-to-hand combat leveling in, in Heroes Unlimited. You know what I mean? When you get like 100 tickets at skee ball and you're like, ooh, there's a go kart back there. 300,000 tickets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was thinking you meant get a ticket for the go karts. <laughs> at- I don't know. The- they don't have go-karts with Chuck E. Cheese unless they're aspirational gifts behind the gift counter. I'm not talking about a family fun center. Oh, I'm talking about a Bullwinkles, baby. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so there are a bunch of stats to talk about as well. Absolutely. Yeah, a whole phase rip. A phase rip of stats plus a couple oh, extras. That's that's coming in two sections. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't mean soon. to. No, it's the, fine. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I mean, I'm if it makes sense to, to talk about it now, we can talk about it now. It is no, very no, I want to, talk, to I want do this. It, this is your show, and I want to do it your way. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> my way You're would be to stop here. doing this game. <laughs> stop letting let's Ryan get, pick things. Let's get hamburgers. Yeah. Uh, we can make them from that fancy book you have. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> what do you think makes this game unique among superhero games. I mean, we've talked a little like about a few things here and there, but among like the, the plethora of superhero games out there, what, what makes this different from a heroes unlimited or, you know, something else that's also terrible. Probably there. I I mean, we are pretty much the the sommeliers of the, of the superhero role-playing game world. (laughs) <laughs> just by dint of what we've been doing I'm going to so swirl long. this RPG around in my mouth <laughs> This one has legs <laughs> There's a good body to this wings. one That indicates it was made in the 80s mm. <laughs> no, like, um, Okay This is a nice XP finish We definitely just talked a little bit about what might be the most Defining characteristic of the game Which is that giant resolution chart Yeah. Like If, if you come away from reading this game That's going to be one of the major things you remember I would go to bat for this game Having some of the most interesting supplements Of a superhero game With some of the best characters character creation random tables if that's the kind of thing you're into that there has ever been (laughs) if you're not into that kind of thing it's still something that makes this game unique but it's like a big warning sign yeah yeah if you manage to get the ultimate powers book for this you can end up being like oh you know in normal role-playing games with uh superheroes you'll get things like i can shoot a laser or I fly or whatever. If you get the ultimate powers book, you'll end up things with like, I've got light skates that I use them to uh, f- fly, but only by flapping my legs. And you're like, what the? <laughs> How my favorite did you is the, do this? The one where you automatically teleport to where danger is. With, and the power rank only controls the rank, the, the distance to which you teleport <laughs> involuntarily. Oh, no. Yeah, it's like spider man spider sense for danger, but it teleports you there. Yes. Oh, so wow. you could be like, oh, I'm taking a shower, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> whoop, oh, I'm on the moon. Oh, no. Someone's robbing a bank, and here I am just bare naked running around like, stop that. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was reading the foreword to the Ultimate Powers book, and they're like, we examined every single superpower that anybody has ever come up with ever and put it in this book, and then we added more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like what I usually tell people, because uh, I'm a big fan of masks. I, I, I like masks. I, I like a lot of modern superhero games. Masks and yeah. Sentinels are come up with some of my core favorites. One of the things I don't like about masks is that, given that it's so much a focus on char- uh, character development and growing up, 
that the power, the powers in the game tend to be like, oh, just choose one of these four powers that's on your playbook sheet. You mm. have shifting powers or transgressive powers. And I'm like, I want more random granular crap in my game. Right. Um, right. And so what I will tell people is get that ultimate powers guide, roll your powers in that, and then play, <laughs> then play masks oh. with those powers. <laughs> that does sound <laughs> it, amazing. It doesn't matter if they don't do anything. That's just a descriptive hook for you that you've got the weirdest powers. <laughs> That would be a lot of fun to take like a game that has this level of granularity to the powers and nitty gritty. Like here's all the rules for this one little power and, and then just throw it into a completely narrative game yeah. and forget it, toss out the rules and, and just say, all right, my, my guy can uh, like fly through pe- planets specifically. And that's it. I have phasing ability, but only for planets. You can build yep. that. That's not even complicated. I mean, I everything in this game is complicated, but it can be done. It can be done. You can just, uh, you know, point A to point B. Yeah. That, that's your yeah. superhero name. Yeah. Shortest that's, distance. Shortest distance. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's and, and he can start. He can start every comic. He can start every comic he's in by demonstrating his power by folding a piece of paper and then poking a pen through it. Yep. Just like he's in every movie about warp travel. <laughs> but you see, if you bend space, he says, and everyone's like, "Yeah, we've all seen it. We've all seen Event Horizon. We've all seen Star Trek." <laughs> yeah, we know uh, Kurt. It's fine. <laughs> So if you go into the land of the Banffs and then you <laughs> teleport out of it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm really excited. Uh, we need to talk about the history of this game, this series of okay. uh, supplements. Uh, we, we said, it, what, was it 1986 that the base version came out? Uh, 84 for the base version. Ooh. The version we are re- reading today is the 86 Advanced Player's Guide bo- version. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, so both versions written by the same guy, uh, a D and D author by the name of Jeff Grubb. Uh, and he, this was back when you could be a little more chummy in game writing, which is when I mentioned earlier that, that gag about a dune bug fellow, uh, because he puts asides into the book a lot that are very personal. Uh, and so you'll, you'll come across things that are like, really the only difference between a two, uh, a two wheel drive Jeep and a four wheel drive Jeep is that a four wheel drive Jeep gets stuck in even weirder places. Source, my good dune buggy friend, dune bug Doug. What? <laughs> my friend donkey Doug told me about how <laughs> four wheel drive sucks. And you're like, what is this game? <laughs> what are you doing in there? But it basically is just a sign of the times that that uh, yeah. there was less editorial uh, restrictions and so on on game writing in the era. So you could just put in whatever you wanted <laughs> for better or worse. Yeah, there are just an absolute I, I couldn't even begin to tell you the list of supplements for this. There's uh, a, a, an incredible amount Um they, they kept printing up until the early 90s. So I know that we got as far as the point where there's multiple X force books. Uh, which feels weird when you're reading this. You're like, oh, this is the mid 80s. Like this is when She-Hulk reigns supreme. And then you get to the end and it's got all that Rob Liefeld art and a million pictures of cable and so on. Yeah, I mm-hmm. mean, this ran for a while as yes. a thing they supported. Yes, they kept they kept supporting it for a long time. Uh, th- there's a million interesting supplements for it that I, I don't even know how to describe. I'm used to just like three of them personally. <laughs> the player's book, the ultimate powers guide, the DM guide. And I believe I also had a, uh, power armor tech source book that we made a lot of use out of when I was a kid. Oh, nice. Well, yeah. yeah who wouldn't power armor? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If that's an option, we're picking that option. <laughs> so, so one of the other fun things is that this is the first of three Marvel role playing games. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, those they, they keep shopping it around. So this one was made by TSR. The next one was made by I want to say it's it's uh I forget who it's called saga edition, but it's not star the same saga as star star Wars saga. So it's not made by wizards of the coast. And my understanding is it is a card based game, but I've never actually found a copy of it. I'm still on the market. If anyone knows. Oh, wow. And uh, then the last version, the most recent version that's been published uh, from around 2003. Uh, so still very old. That's Marvel diceless, uh, which is a, a, again, an incredibly different game that uses no dice at all. It's all done with like, resource stone allocation mm-hmm. and uh we've reviewed that one and it is 
borderline unplayable. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and if you're curious as to who would publish a borderline unplayable role playing game, it's just Marvel. They didn't they didn't shop out to a a, a role playing oh. design design company or anything. They just did it in house and messed it up real bad. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, somebody's got to design games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this is the first one, and I think most people, I am not. I can't say for certain, because again, I've never read Saga, and I, I don't know that much about it, but I, my understanding is this is kind of the most universally re- well-remembered one. But we mm. do have the next Marvel one coming out. Yes, there's another is, one coming. I think close to when this comes out. It's supposed to be in April. Yeah, Modifius Ooh. is making it, right? Yeah, we get the Marvel multiverse oh, role-playing game. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And it looks very interesting as well. Uh, so that, that should be, uh, yeah, it's a Modifius game. It should be coming out fairly soon. I don't know much about it. The only thing I remembered was that I saw the cover and I was like, who's this weird skinny guy and was told that that's what Thor looks like now? Yeah. yeah. Oh. He, looks, he looks like Elric oh. of Melna Bonet now. He's got, you know, long flowing hair and a weird sort of starry shirt. He got very pale for some mm. reason. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's there's there's a new one coming. Very cool. Okay, so now... We can talk about the the stats in this game, and we can yeah. we can say the words phaser. <laughs> now phase you're rip. allowed to phase, phase rip. rip. One thing that's probably worth allowed. mentioning it's when we talk time. about phase rip over and over again is that there is another role playing game out there, a retro clone of this game, uh, printed. I, I published. I want to say within the last three or four years, that mm-hmm. is called Phase Rip. That that's the name oh, of the whole game. Yeah, yeah. So that's out there. It's on Drive Through RPG. I've never actually read it, but I just wanted to point it out so that. To, to uh, avoid confusion that, yes, there is a game that exists called Phase Rip. This ain't it. Mm-hmm. This is what that so, was based on. So yeah. you're, pronounc- you're pronouncing the S like a Z, uh, which is a little bit less fun. Oh, you want to say Phase like Rip. A- he, he wants to say yeah. Phase Rip, yeah. <laughs> I've always said Phase Rip. Yeah. Well, but you do you. You I, say face rip. <laughs> I, I think you can say whatever you want and it'll be just fine. Potato, <laughs> potato, face rip, yeah. face rip. Let's call it's the whole true. thing off. I want to pronounce the E like that. <laughs> Please let's not. Fasse rip. Fasse rip. Fasse rip. Fasse rip. Fasse rip. Yeah. That's, Fasse there's no is it, E is at the Italian end. Or? Yeah, I put, a, I put an umlaut on the I. Don't worry okay. about it. It's fine. There's, there's so many diacriticals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so what is it? It's, it stands for fighting, agility, strength, endurance, reason, intuition, psyche. Oh. So they are the basic they are the basic yeah. stats of the game. Um, the interesting stat out of those, because you hear basically seven, seven stats as opposed to the regular D&D six mm-hmm. is fighting. Uh, the rest of them map pretty clearly to the D&D stats. You got agility, strength, endurance, and you've got reason, intuition, psyche, which map out to intellect, uh, wisdom and something kind of like force of will charisma. Oh, but fighting is straight up your hit probability and your defense in combat. It, it doesn't map to your body like any of your raw it's just how good you are at fighting yes yeah, it's talent yeah mm. and your face is going to be basically that block of stats is your physical stats and so that's going to inform things like your health mm-hmm. the rip part is all of your mind stats so that'll give you like all of your psychic power or willpower things like that yeah, and in fact, your I think your first two major substats are just the sum totals of your uh, of your the phase numbers, and your rip of your face and your rip. Yeah. Oh wow. So that's like your health and your pool. I, I forget the is rip is the rip pool karma or is it no? It's like a spell point. I mean, thing. it might be karma. I, as I well. don't remember. It's been a it's been a while. <laughs> this, this was this episode two hundred for us, and we're at two hundred and twenty two right now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I think karma is from rip. You also get a bunch of other stats that aren't like your physical stats, like your resources, mm-hmm. popularity, your popularity, which if you are a mutant, you have zero popularity because everyone hates mutants. And mm-hmm. This is Marvel. Uh, also robots. Cause no one <laughs> cares about robots. Okay. So you have zero popularity. <laughs> oh, wow. The best thing in this game is that you can kill robots with no karma loss. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, because they're already orphans. Because they're not, they're not. (laughs) They're already orphans. Yeah, you can also kill orphans in this game and not lose (laughs) karma. That's horrible. Uh, Well, I I mean, I I, kind of get it because I I guess the only problem is, is then that, that, you know, that's the whole, like, our robots are... uh, sentient robots, are they actually sentient? Well, the problem is that it's, it's the kind of question that makes a lot of 
you know, having a stoned conversation while staring at the stars, purely hypothetical, no, no right. background details to be mm-hmm. like, what's the morality of killing a robot? But when you tie it to the Marvel universe, you, you change it immediately to what's the morality of murdering vision? Yeah. But the game well, apparently is like, it's oh, fine. <laughs> you yes. don't lose karma in the game because they can be repaired. Like if I blow a hole in vision and then someone comes by and is like, well, I guess I'll replace all these circuits and boot them back up. <laughs> that's why you don't lose karma is because you didn't really kill them. Yeah. Which is funny because even by the 80s, that was historically inaccurate. That every time villain uh, vision got really messed with and turned back on, he was like someone else entirely now. <laughs> His <laughs> backstory is the dumbest backstory in Marvel. That's because they had to keep Wow, mapping. that's a bold claim. <laughs> <laughs> had to map Power Man's brainwaves onto his body. Yeah, he's built out of the original Human Torch, who was an android, and then he got mapped with the brainwaves of Power <laughs> Man, but then later Power Man said that he wasn't allowed to use his brainwaves anymore. Well, you see, Ultron well, I don't took know why the you're original telling Human us this. Torch. We all know this. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows. It's funny Everyone we, knows. It's funny because Vision, even in the MCU, has like a complicated kind of hard-to-remember backstory. Like He's made yeah. out of a, a bunch of stuff that happened in Avengers 2 all at once, but his actual backstory is so much worse. Oh, man. I can't, I, uh, I, I want to be able to keep track of it. And like, I, I do. And as somebody who like enjoys L5R and like spent a lot of time making a podcast on the lore of that, like, I feel like I can't say it. Like, I want to be able to keep track of it. I don't think it's, also, I don't like, think it's like physically possible for any one or two people to, well, I mean, to you've just got like, Catalog. 60 years worth of that's the backstory yeah. for things right and right. then you, you i mean you, the other thing i would really not want to do is view this game's morality mechanics through the modern lens when now vision has like teenage children that yeah. are also robots so you're like is it perfectly moral to kill vision's kids <laughs> right well those no because those <laughs> robots are not orphans <laughs> <laughs> those robots don't exist. Yeah. You have to you have to kill Vision first and then the kids <laughs> right, are Right, and then those yeah. robots are already orphans and then it's fine. See, and because Vision <laughs> is a robot, you don't lose anything for killing Vision. Yep. Once you kill Vision, then his kids are free game. <laughs> It's really then? about what order you do it in. I think. Well, well, welcome to the order operation. The hardest question of all is that, that that comic also featured them building a robot dog for the family. Now, uh, oh, if you kill a robot dog, it's oh, straight you to the ocean. Kill dogs. <laughs> You walk into the sea. <laughs> you monster. Welcome to the family friendly character creation cast where, where we create characters and kill robots. Well, I, yeah. I should point out that it's very family friendly because we all just agreed that it's not OK to kill a robot dog. It's very true. Right. I yeah. think that's. Yeah, it's very true. Dogs yeah. can never be orphans. Yeah, because they're good. They're good boys. <laughs> they're they are everyone's true. kids. <laughs> right. That's obvious. Uh, so uh, is, the, is, stats, <laughs> the stats range in we already talked a little bit about the ranks that they range from like feeble to monstrous for starting player characters. Uh, it, it, I, personally, I'm not a huge fan of these words. I think it was probably a good idea because they were trying to tie in to the comics that they made. You know, every comic was always like the Incredible Spider-Man or the Hulk. The, the Incredible. Well, yeah, Incredible Hulk or the Amazing Spider-Man or, or the Spectacular Spider-Man, the spectacular. which they don't use spectacular in this. And it makes me very angry. <laughs> but, the, the, but the problem is that it's hard to remember that that when you have a stat and your stat is good, that that's actually bad because that's second from the worst. Mm. Well, that's like a tall at Starbucks is actually the smallest one. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> and so it, it, in my mind, it's much easier to just go by the numbers. But I mean, I get why they were doing what they were doing. But th- the idea is that you roll for rank values and and you also have to write down the numbers yeah oh wild <laughs> it's uh it's a weird system is there any other terms concepts that we'll need to know going into character creation uh, well we already let's see we already talked about column shifts uh we didn't talk about well, the origins which are probably the most important thing you're going to need to know going into character creation uh, if you're using the core book there are only five and those are uh, altered human uh, mutant, high tech, uh, robot, robot alien. and alien. Okay. Um, and what those will do is each one of them will give you one little bonus. Like for example, a mutants get an extra power, but by the same token, they have to set their popularity to zero. Uh, aliens have one less power, but they have way better stats like stat potential, uh, and so on. Uh, but they also give you a table on which you roll your stats, which will have potentials based on what you are. So if you're making an altered human or a mutant, you have fairly low potential because, you know, 
Cyclops mm-hmm. has crazy powerful laser beams, but he himself is pretty much just a muscular dude. Right. Cyclops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But if you make an alien, it might just be that the entire alien species is enormous jacked pe- hippo men who are have super strength. So it, it, <laughs> it might be a real tall elephant man who can become a slightly taller elephant man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does he maybe fly a tiny plane? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> he can fly t- might, cr- might create clouds of darkness and fire dark beams out of it. Yeah. <laughs> who can say? <laughs> who could possibly know? Oh, see, this is why I like these games. I mean, I didn't I didn't have to cheat or anything to make Event Horizon the Elephant Man in Heroes <laughs> yep. Unlimited. That <laughs> <No>. just happened. <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> Absolutely. I am so excited to see what sort of random nonsense we get. And we have we have to use the Ultimate Powers book. Oh, of course. Now, the Ultimate Powers book, I mentioned that there were five origins in Ultimate Powers. In Ultimate Powers, there's like 30. <laughs> Yeah. What are you going to say? John, you want to? Uh, the other thing to know is in addition to getting your stats and your powers... Uh, there are talents, and talents are essentially just ways to shift your column for certain uh, actions. So they don't really have skills, per se, as much as they have talents. Normally, if you're like, oh, I want to try and do something, it'll map to a stat. But -hmm. if you're like, oh, I have a talent for specifically driving, then I might column shift my agility when driving. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Talents. Yeah. Uh, The other thing you'll find out is number of contacts you have. So, you know, friends or allies or whatever you happen to have is one of the other things that you will make uh, at the start. The other thing we mentioned earlier, we were talking about team balance. Mm -hmm. And that is the point at which you realize that there just isn't any. Because when <laughs> yeah. you're rolling, when you're rolling powers, if you roll high, you'll have five powers out of a maximum of five powers. So you think, oh, well, there's no room to grow. That's OK. If you roll really low, you'll have one power out of a maximum of four. Oh. So you, so you, you get way less powers. And if you feel like spending it or saving XP for years, you can almost get as good as the person who rolled high at the beginning. Wow. Perfect. Love it. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. It's, it's not going to cause any kind of resentment or uh, uh, problems yeah. oh, at no. all. That is that is the ultimate powers book. The difference between number of powers you start with and uh, what you can grow in is much less uh, varied in the main book. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, if you roll real bad, you'll have two. If you get real good, you'll have five. Well, yeah. Uh, but like... <laughs> You get to that Ultimate Powers book and it just goes absolute <laughs> buck wild. Yeah, the first character I ever made in this game was an iguana that got turned into a, a dragon and it had 14 powers because of random rolls. Wow. Just That's so you, much to keep track of. Oh, yeah. So, the fact weird. that you can roll a 100 on number of powers and you get 14 <laughs> yeah. is like, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but I mean, don't worry about it. Just don't roll high on the how many powers do you have? Yeah, charged. just don't yeah. roll high. Yeah, don't roll high. Just cheat, you know, Got so it. you have a lower roll and you want it to do as much work. I don't okay. know about that. I don't yeah. think. Well, I of course, that. some powers cost multiple powers. Mm-hmm. Oh, so okay. if they're particularly good, it might be like, oh, this is counts as two power selections to pick oh. this. Yes. And also some powers might suggest other powers. So, for example, if you roll like. I don't know, winged flight, then it might recommend that you also pick up an aerial combat power. And if you get given that option, you don't, that recommendation is actually a unlock. So you could be like, well, I rolled winged flight. It suggests aerial combat. I don't have to roll up aerial combat later. I can just write it down now as one of my power choices. Oh, oh, there you but go. it so still counts as an additional power, right? Yes, it's like yeah, unlock It still takes trees. a slot, but yeah, you don't gotcha. have to, if you're doing you the to- random roll... Wait it essentially it yeah. says now you can just pick this. And of course, just mm-hmm. like every other game, all of the random rolls are optional. You can go through and pick the number, the powers you would like lame. to have. But super <laughs> lame. No one, I've never known anyone to do that. And I think r- rightly anyone we found out who was doing that would be shunned. And right. I, I, I can't even imagine, like with the amount of options, the f- decision paralysis would be overwhelming. I mean, you see the tables in this, and if you aren't, salivating to start rolling some dice on it. I don't even want to know you. Now, (laughs) there is one other thing worth getting into, um, which is that if you happen to roll a high tech hero or a magical hero, welcome to the land of subsystems. 
Uh, because if you roll a high tech hero, you're going to have to go to the the gear creation sections and start Ooh. building power armor suits and junk. And if you roll magic, it, you get powers the same as, but now they have failure chances because magic and Marvel is granted by forces beyond our world. Like, you know, the hoary host of Hoggeth or uh, oh. the rings of Ragador and what have you. Uh, and in this game where Dr. Strange normally doesn't have any problems with those in this game, he might, he'll be like, well, it's TSR. So yeah. now there's spell failure, there's, there's failure, <laughs> which the regular, regular powers don't have as failure chance. But for him, he's just like by the hoary host of Hoggeth. Oh, come on. Come on. Work. Oh, Hoggeth. <laughs> oh, Hoggeth. Just, and the, the tech one is mostly just skinning. It'll be like, oh, if I have laser blasts and I'm a tech here, I just say it's part of my armor. Yeah. Because yeah. there is also a s- entire subsystem in here of buying or making gadgets. Oh. But it is very difficult. You can kind of be like, oh, I made a gun that duplicates a power. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it only has like X amount of uses and it might break or it might just not work. But if you have the power as a power, then you just go, yeah, whatever. It's my repulsor beam. It always works. I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. There's this whole thing that's like, Hey, if you want to play as forge, for example, and his mm-hmm. whole deal is he can make all kinds of crazy gear. Uh, the, the book will straight up tell you forge is never going to make an Iron Man suit. Cause the Iron Man suit is a core origin power for Iron Man. Uh, all the junk forge makes is gadgetry and it will mm-hmm. never rise to the level of the Iron Man suit. It's not supposed to his powers are something else. Yeah. Iron Man, also a magical girl. <laughs> yes, Stop uh, it. I think functionally. <laughs> Transformation sequences, character growth, all that sort of fun stuff. Yep. Yeah. Alcoholism. Yeah, total alcohol. Well, I mean, he could be a Madoka magical girl <laughs> where all kinds of bad stuff happens to him constantly. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, all right. Well, uh, are, are we ready to, to dive into the, the actual character creation? Stuff I, think we, I, th- I think we are. One thing I would like to suggest, um, because, again, we are going to use the characters we're making today in a AP game for uh, an, a, a network event that's going to be happening fairly soon. A, a, yes. a Trans Lifeline fundraiser, uh, which will be held on Monday, May 16th on the OSN Twitch stream. Um, so uh, because we're doing that, these characters are going to be for a themed game that we're going to play later. Uh, I'm not mm. going to tell you to change anything about your random roles and so on. I just want everyone who's making characters to think Halloween. Yes. Okay. That's all. That's the only advice you need. Uh, uh, okay. Whatever you perfect. get, skin it for Halloween. Flavor it for Halloween. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Amazing. All right. Uh, well, I, I guess uh, let's, let's make some people. Let's make some people. So I'll be using the ultimate powers guide. And I'm, I, I hope hopefully most people will be. In which I case, so. your random rolls will start on page three with a perc- with an incredibly cool percentile roll. Amazing! It's time to see what my physical form is. Awesome! Gosh, I I'm excited. I'm excited to roll some dice and see what sort of nonsense we come up with. It sure will be a thing. All right. Oh. So physical form. Uh, I'm in the ultimate powers book because of as course you I should am, be as I should be. Um, there is you know like three dozen uh, different potential uh outcomes on this one through 100 table yep and i really hope i don't roll 26 or lower because that's normal human and that's boring oh, yep. yeah i love that they make a difference in physical form between normal human and humanoid race well that's supposed to be <laughs> like, like an elf or something because ah, you gotta yes. take into account that marvel Mar- the marvel universe does have elves with a gun no that's a dc guy <laughs> no um there's elves because there's the seven realms of asgard the seven deadly oh realms yeah of asgard. yeah that's for sure well, because there's, there's, there's the dark elves which were the evil elves and there are also light elves in in uh alfheim as opposed to svart alfheim so oh, there's yeah. just there's just both elves and dwarves <laughs> well elves and tolkien dwarves. is part of the marvel universe as you know Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to make all the token nerds mad. Can I make Sauron uh, or Saruman in, uh, in, yeah. in this? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and your spells just, fail. He's just a wizard. <laughs> he's a deity wizard. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Amazing. All right. We're going to go ahead and roll, uh, see what I get. All right. Here we go. One, a uh, hundred. I got a hundred. You got a change. Oh, you're going to have a tough time. Again, <laughs> oh, didn't no. you have changeling last time? No, you had some kind of like form changing. No, no, I was, like, I was a chameleon last time. Oh, okay. Yeah, get ready. This is, you're going to you're going to be rolling like you're basically making two characters who can turn into each other. Oh, no, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
like when you do when you go and look up what changeling is it literally is like make two characters and you can spend like an amount of time to turn from one to the other wow okay yeah so i rolled changeling and i go to the changeling sub table um effectively hero can transform into any of a number of possible body types each body type aspect of the changeling possesses its regular advantages and disadvantages blah 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 yeah you're basically making two characters (laughs) if you want to do it that seems complex but that seems so compelling (laughs) well find a way to tie it to halloween i'm fine with it oh absolutely costume on costume off oh my god (gasps) did i just make a magical girl (laughs) well let's see i rolled an 86 a magical girl (laughs) i'm kidding john what did you get I got the exact thing I wanted. Oh, I got I, a deity. You got 89. <laughs> you got yeah. deity. I was hoping for an 89. Oh, I'm so deity, happy. Really good. You get some amazing stats. Amazing. No, oh, I get some remarkable stats. <laughs> <laughs> well, I almost got a hundred. I rolled a 98. Woof. What's that? Undead. Nice. Perfect oh, for wow. me. Halloween character. Yeah. yeah. So I've got, I'm, I'm zero complaints you're, you're about set that already. Jeez. Yeah. What did you get, Amelia? Um, I got a I got robot. A rock. And yeah, I got a rock. Um, a robot uh use a form. So anything except human shaped. Oh yeah, okay. use a form robot was the one I was hoping for. And it is <laughs> Oh, it's, we can trade. Pur- <laughs> it's it's purpose driven robot. The idea yeah. behind that is that you are a robot built for a function as opposed to a robot built to impersonate a human. Mm-hmm. So you can be like, oh, my character looks like a spider or a, a, a black cat robot or something. Anything but human, as long as it kind of has a reason why it doesn't look like a guy. Yeah. So, so I think I'm going to wait until I know like more about the powers before I decide like what the shape is. That's a good choice. Yeah. OK, so as a changeling, I need to roll again twice on that form table. Yes. Is that correct? Uh-huh. Cool. Oh, whatever why, it tells right. you. Yeah. There's, if you scroll down to the bottom of the power section, there's a, there's an instruction for what... Uh, changeling. Okay, here we go. First, you roll a percentile to see how many more times you have to roll. <laughs> oh, I can do. Im- oh, I can have more than two forms. You can have up to five. Oh, why? Okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, Ninety-nine. What in okay, the world have, is have, happening with my dice? Yeah, you have five. You have five forms. <laughs> I can you're, make five characters. Yeah, you're gonna. You're gonna be. Well, uh, you have five forms. Five, five forms. forms. Um, it yeah. looks like the powers are shared between all forms, right? Uh. So okay. They possess regular advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the powers have to be assigned to any or all of the aspects. Each aspect has to have at least one power unique to it. So uh, if you have extra powers over five, like if, if you have five powers, each one of them is on one form. If you have six, that sixth one can apply to all of them. Oh, OK. I, this is super interesting. OK, I like it. I like that I have to kind of change to a different form to use a certain power that I would have. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, granted, you will not be doing it in combat. To change from one form to another takes ten combat turns. <laughs> what? Yeah. So it's it's basically like uh, your character needs to. It's like you suit up for missions. You're like, oh, I need to be in. I mean, you're less Ben Ten and more like someone who can put on an alien suit at home. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Here's here's forms one through five coming at you. I hope it's like three humans. Ninety seven. This is wild. Ethereal. I, I haven't rolled lower than a 97 so far. Cheater. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm using my die that's all nines and zeros. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, 81 is a robot human shape. Yeah, it's a basic robot. All right. 71. We're going lower and lower here. Uh, cyborg. Artificial limbs and organs. Okay. Ooh, limbs and organs. Delicious limbs and organs. <laughs> and I'm I'm trying to uh, figure out how does a changeling automatically turn into something with robotic parts, or does that not matter? It just doesn't matter. Okay, it you, just happens. You just grow them. Like your character is a cyborg. It could be that you have like the cable techno virus, and you switch or, between having some of the the your body parts be techno robot and all of them. Okay, ninety two uh, abnormal chemistry, whatever that mm-hmm. means. All right. Last one. 74. Another uh, cyborg, isn't it? Yeah. Your cyborg 
exoskeleton. <laughs> so three of my things are robot. Yeah. Uh, two of, one of them's ethereal and one of them's abnormal chemistry. I mean, you may just be Vision? shape changing because you are a robot. Yeah. <laughs> it could be the robot form is, mo- is modular and moving around. Yeah. Like, especially because two of them are artificial limbs and organs and like exoskeleton, which sounds like you move from having, you know, you, you, it's like, what's her name? Witchblade, where she's got that, ro- that, ah. that arm and then she can stretch it out. So it kind of covers her as a suit of armor. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, what's ethereal all about? Like uh, a ghost. Oh, okay. Intangible disembodied spirit. Oh, this is, this is such a wild character concept already. <laughs> and I've got the ghost thing going on. So Halloween. Yeah, you're the ghost who is in the soul of a robot. Yeah. Oh, this is wild. Okay. So uh, this will be fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll be super useful in AP. I mean, I, I imagine you'll probably maybe get a chance to use two of those forms. Well, here's the deal. That's the challenge. He'll slip and slide on this banana peel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... If you're running it, you could just be like, yo, change form. I don't care. It doesn't take <laughs> 10 rounds. Who cares? Yep. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So, yeah. T- uh, change themselves from one aspect to another in 10 turns. Uh, no powers can function ten during that turns. time. <laughs> uh, all so primary bad. abilities temporarily drop. Uh, negative 2 CS. Yeah, that's um, just two column shifts to the left. Yeah. So then uh, I'm just trying to see. So do I need to go to each of those forms and see what each of those forms give me? Yes. Yes. (laughs) You're making you're making five sets of stats. You are doing five characters. You're basically making five five characters. Five hours later. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So uh, this is super wild and I'm here for it. Okay. All right, so let's see. I got an undead, which rolls on the column one, which is the regular everybody day column, uh, but increases strength and endurance. No way, man. Column one's pretty good. Oh, is it all right? Yeah, uh, column two and three are kind of crap. Oh, okay. Um, looks like I need to work with a judge to come up with a body maintenance procedure unless I happen to possess a vampiric power. So we'll see what happens there. And also there's a technical note in mind that says, at this time, all bio vampires on the Marvel Universe Earth have been destroyed. Your campaign, however, can be free of this restriction if you, de- if, if you so desire. The great <laughs> continuity goddess bade me mention it anyway. Uh, like I said, very chummy, these books. Wow. Um, and I, I got to assume I, that must have been a weird period in 1986 when all the vampires were dead. Yeah, I mean, all the bio vampires. He's like, Blade must have been hunting something else. Or Everyone, maybe I have an update. In the robot section, it says... There is a karma loss if a hero purposely destroys a sentient robot. Oh. Robots are people too. They must have changed that between the core. They must have gotten a lot of complaints or something. Non-sentient <laughs> robots are cannon fodder. Yeah. Oh, there you if go. If you're just like, you know, some Ultron bot, then yeah, great. Those are supposed to be the things you can blow up. This is Saturday morning cartoon level stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, cartoon. With all the right. all the enemies in there were just mindless robots that were actually looked like exactly. people. Yeah. The Foot Clan was just robots. Or heck, just the X-Men cartoon. I, I think there's Wolverine spent a lot of time cutting up robots on that show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime you have a hero that has a bladed weapon, you're like, well, we got to fight robots so they can use it. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next role you're going to make is uh, your, your or- phase rip. No. Uh, Origin of Power is next in this one. Oh, yeah. All right. Really? Yeah. So it's just another percentile. Oh, yeah. 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 So oh, this is super interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is how your character got your powers. Another percentile. Perfect. A technical mishap? Yeah. Technical that changes. exposure? Accident. My character is so weird. How do you become a robot through chemical exposure? <laughs> you got exposed <laughs> to robot gas. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like okay. you, you were probably exposed to chemicals and then somehow your uh, your sentience got transferred into your robot. Well, oh, they became you, a deity yeah. by being exposed to energy. So, yeah, you yeah. were already a robot and then someone sprinkled you with a magic top hat and you were like, happy birthday. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's true. I guess it doesn't imply that I was a, a human hat. to begin with. <laughs> 
a magic top hat. Let's not be silly. Or at least a top hat in which some old magic must still reside. Amazing. So I only have to roll the origin for my changeling, right? Yes. Yeah, I don't think you have to roll it five times. That's good. So, so far, I'm, I'm just keeping it on the back burner in my brain that each of these five forms have something unique about them. Mm-hmm. And they're all going to have unique face rip stats, right? Yeah, you're basically, you really just have five character sheets. Right. Uh, that's why I'm not using character sheets right now. <laughs> yeah. Because this is going to get ridiculous. <laughs> all right. Okay, so technical mishap. I can figure, I can, I can work with that. Let's see. I rolled creation, uh, which means that that I, you got made. I got made. So I'm going to since I'm already undead, I'm going to for the moment, I'm going to assume a Frankenstein's monster type. Yeah. Like stitched together out of out of dead parts to make a single new hero. Because cool. because the rule for creation is you were born in the form you now have as an adult with whatever powers you have. Mm-hmm. So it's like I just came online as a, as an undead. So, yeah, I'm kind of leaning in a Frankenstein direction. There you go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Good old Franken castle. Mm-hmm. I like that they've got like full descriptions for all these. The the technical mishap: the hero was caught in an experiment or a procedure gone awry. But there, uh, it almost feels like I'm I. It, it's almost like a Doctor Manhattan sort of uh, like origin for my character. Almost, yeah. That sounds pretty sweet. I'm gonna say the energy I was exposed to was the cosmic cube, which turned me into a deity. Ooh, using Ooh. stuff from the continuity. That's right, baby. <laughs> I know about Marvel Comics. <laughs> All right. So now, after everyone gets one of those, now we're gonna roll your phase rip, and you'll figure out what column you're rolling on based on whatever your form was. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord. Uh, all right. Time to go to town Which, on that. Where, where is, is my column four? Ooh, nice. You'll have different columns for basically, yeah. So, uh, okay. Ryan, you're gonna have five columns to roll on. I think a lot yeah. of the robot ones use the same column, probably four. Mm-hmm. But, oh, that's uh, so bad. But yeah, each one's gonna tell you what to roll. Somewhere in this multiple paragraphs of uh, text, there is okay. Ethereal's roll on column one. Uh, fighting rank is zero in the Earth dimension unless the Ethereal is fighting another Ethereal. Yes, that yeah, one you, you can't don't roll touch on. Touch people. Yeah, because when you're when you're ethereal, you're a gas, and you can't get in fights except with other. Well, you're not. There's gases. You're literally just sort of out of phase with reality. You're basically a ghost, so you can't fight. Spirit vampirism completely destroys ethereals. Yeah. Psi vampirism destroys the self image and reduces the ethereal to a mindless poltergeist. Oh, wild. <laughs> Do we just roll them in order? Is yeah, that... yeah. Okay. Just write down the phase rip. All right. So, oh, I got it. We got to roll multiple times for each of each of them. Yeah, every oh, step. Oh God, I'm gonna be here forever. This is fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> I keep waiting for you to be like, you know what? Maybe I'll just have two forms. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll re-roll and not be a changeling. <laughs> Never. I'm I'm here to figure this out. So you're gonna want to write down two numbers for each one of these rolls. Uh, the roll, the number that you actually rolled. Uh, and then also uh, for each one, there is a number listed. Um, so, for example, I just rolled my fighting. I rolled an 86. So I'm going to write down 86. Incredible 36. Because they are both relevant. And the 36 is from the name. Th- there's a, a well, line. I mean, the thing you rolled doesn't actually matter. Just the, the, the incredible book tells you to write it down. I think because there's ways to shift it up and down with certain things. Where's the 36 so, coming from? Uh, initial rank number on that chart. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, so if you're happening rolling on a column four, for example, yeah. you're still you're like, oh, I got a remarkable. Then you're just going to go up to the, the column above and see the remarkable is a 26. OK, I got it. OK, so I am just creating my own little character sheet here in in Notepad++. Because why, why not? I've got five face rips going on. <laughs> OK, so ethereal uh, face rip table number one. And it's just, you just go down the line for, for all five of the, or five, seven of those stats, right? That's right. All right. I rolled far too well, and being a deity gives yeah. me a plus two column shift. Yeah, you're, you're going to be... Uh, my agility is shift X. I was going to say, not only, when you, roll, when you play a deity, not only do you uh, roll on the best table, but you also column shift everything two over. 
It's uh, uh, it's a little on the unfair side. Well, it's not really the best table because it's got the most range to it. Like, yeah, a one through ten is a feeble. No, but the big difference is that you can't have a feeble. At most, you can have a remarkable because you're shifting two columns at the very oh, minimum. Yes. So yeah. you don't go to feeble. You go to typical, I think, is the lowest you can have. Yeah. This is taking forever. Just saying. Oh, yikes. That was really <laughs> I'm not even halfway through my first one. Yikes. I was doing great. And then that last one was. All right. So my lowest stat is excellent at in, for my endurance. My highest is agility at shift X. You know what? I, I think I can. I can make this a little easier on myself if I just write down what I rolled on all of these and just uh, go from there. And then just uh, create a different character. Oh, you should talk. <laughs> okay, so I have like what I have incredible, 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 monstrous, good, incredible, amazing. Great. Just one now, good, just like very sad. Yeah. Just, just one You'll good, usually get, good. you know, one stat that you're like, it's oh. My, it's my, my reason. So it's, mm-hmm. it's great. Uh, the, yeah, no. I'm doing horrible on these rolls. <laughs> you <can turn laughs> You're just fire on the rolls to find things. out what you are, and then when it actually matters, it's just garbage. I haven't rolled above a 30 yet. Nice. Okay, so... Amazing. Amazing is a 46. Okay. I mean, it's going to get jumped up because I'm undead, but still. This is my ethereal form, so I don't care as much. Yeah, it's fine. If your ghost sucks, it's fine. You got you got a crap. I've got, I've got four other forms to choose from. Yeah, <laughs> this is just five chances to roll good. Yep, <laughs> it's, it's so true. It's so uh, find so the best form and be like, well, there Stay we go. There. <laughs> okay, so then the character sheet has initial roll, initial rank. Current yeah, so rank. the current uh, rank number. So the initial rank number uh, is going to be what you would write next to whatever that uh, rose thing is. So your good would be an eight. Right. Yeah. So like, I'm just looking at the actual character sheet because it's like initial role and initial rank and then current rank and well, current yeah, rank because... number. And I'm just trying to figure where does like the initial rank number go? So you would, the initial rank number, just put that as your current rank number. Okay. Because it just in case you are spending karma to increase your stat because it's a range, you'd be like, Oh, I started at eight. Now I'm a 12. I'm still technically good rank. It's also what you use for things like damage calculation. If you shoot someone with an incredible power beam, for example, it will start at 36 damage. Cause that's the, the base floor number on, on incredible. Yeah. Okay. Incredible. I'm still I'm still on my third form right now. I don't even know what this translates to, but um, so far I had 94 in endurance uh, for my cyborg artificial limbs and organs form. Well, I seem to have my rolls seem to have worked well with what I was intending to make a Frankenstein because I got high rolls for both strength and endurance, and then they both got jumped up. Nice. So I have amazing strength and monstrous endurance, which is perfect for making a Frankenstein in. Frankensteining. Yeah. I mean, I can move on to the next part, which is my weakness generation. Oh. See what my crypto knight is. Oh, my abnormal chemistry is all over the place. Well, it's very abnormal. Uh, Like, the I've got two 11s so far, and uh, a 94 and a 98 in different things. I'm just there very swingy. I'm on the very last one, my cyborg exoskeleton form. Uh, just for rolling them, not for translating them into what they actually are. All right. Weakness generation. Weakness Mine doesn't is... seem to have any, like, changes or anything. It just says roll on column four. Doesn't really list any fun <laughs> finally, anything though. that I have to do. So that's fine. But when I finally get to weakness, that's, or that's when I roll high. Yeah, I rolled a 100 for my dice roll. <laughs> psychological. So psycho- psychological. Is I have a weakness to something psychological. Yeah. Oh, oh Plus wow. Plus I got depression. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm uh back to report that I'm I'm not super happy with all of these rolls, but you know, there's something there. It's fine. <laughs> um I just have to now translate all of these rolls into actual data. Uh, that we can utilize because uh, it feels like this game is uh, homework. Oh, so you've just been writing down the numbers that you rolled. Yep. 
So now you have to go look up what co- what chart each one of those numbers is rolled on because they're in f- they're in several different charts based on what uh-huh. physical form you're talking about, and then look at the actual result that they generate. Yep, <laughs> that, that's where we're at. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Let's see. So typical, good, good, typical. That good, 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 good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got them good, good stats. Ooh, I got an excellent on my ethereal form. That's surprising. What else we got in here? Back down to 16. I got to figure out what my psychological weakness is. I know. I'm kind of, I, I rolled psychological weakness as well. On the one hand, I'm thinking I might want to re-roll it just because we have two very similar things there. On the other hand, and also I'm thinking I'll save this because I wanted, because my character's undead. So a psychological weakness is probably going to be like, you know, holy symbols or fire, fire. And I want to save it to see which one would make the most sense given the powers that he generates. <laughs> given that I'm currently thinking I'm the god of Halloween. <laughs> I was like, are you going to be the Zordon? (laughs) One of the Rangers is the god of Halloween. (laughs) I'm a deity. (laughs) Well, who's on your team? Well, we have Pumpkin Man. We have the Spider Robot. (laughs) We have the god of Halloween. (laughs) Jack Skellington. He's not even the god of Halloween. He's the Pumpkin King. He's the, yeah, he's the Pumpkin King. He's the head of Halloween. Yeah. How many ranks between king and god? Well, I mean, you've got the mayor, and he sucks, and then you've got above him Jack Skellington. <laughs> it's like being Santa for Halloween. Skellington reports to the mayor. <laughs> no, the mayor <laughs> reports to Skellington. Well, we'll have words. <laughs> uh, I can't make decisions. I'm just an elected official. <laughs> okay, so I got 32 for my weakness, which is... But I can roll what it does to me, so we'll Energy do that. allergy. 47 power negation and I gotta say it's really hard to figure out what table you're supposed to be rolling on uh, with all of these it looks like they're kind of grouped together <laughs> like all of the cyborgs are under the same table yes probably yeah column yeah. four column four is a real good one yeah it's a good table to roll on uh, now I gotta find the robots pure robot here. Probably also uh, column four. Well, use of forms are column four. Human shape is column four. Okay. Tony Stark and Iron Man is the perfect example of the exoskeleton. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm going to say my psychological weakness is against pastels. Honestly, one of my... my uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically Eastern colors. Yeah. Oh, no. I was gonna, the uh, I the funny it. thing in the core book is that uh, the technological st- uh, class has to roll on the basic human chart. So they have a topped out intelligence at like incredible or something, which is a bummer because the, the poster boy example is Iron Man, who's got a ludicrously high intelligence. That's like the whole point of the character. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you can't generate him in the core book. Luckily, the ultimate powers guy came along and was like, yeah, well, the tech hero does get a column shift in their reason. That is true. But okay. your your top is still not. As it, high as it moves it from be. like remarkable to amazing. It's not you can't get as high as Tony Stark should. All right, so I figured out what tables all my farms are on now. Now I have to go and figure out all of these. Okay, my human robot uh, is on column four, and all already off the bat, my my fight is at uh, ec- uh, remarkable. That's pretty neat. That's you know remarkable. I I, I you know by the very definition yes. I get a plus two column shift in popularity because people are like, yo, that God, he's pretty cool. (laughs) Love him. So we need the we need the rank on there as well. Right. So what you're going to write down, you already wrote down the number you rolled. So you're going to write down the the uh, word for that chart. And then also there's a number for initial rank result. Put that one put that number there, too. Okay. so you'll end up with three numbers. Well, two numbers and a word. And John's right that you can mostly skip the first one of the three. But sometimes there are characters that interact with it. So I, right. the book does tell you to write it down. Okay. I assume it's mostly for write this down. And then when you're going back, if you have column shifts, just so you know what you rolled. That's probably correct. Yeah. I got a two for my endurance in my humanoid robot form. Wow. Feeble. How fleeble. I'm, a, I'm just a very fragile human robot, apparently. Yeah. Can you, you, can you get powers to like boost up? shift your endurance and yes. all that stuff. I mean, you can get like, <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter if I've, my endurance is feeble. I'm invincible. So you can also yeah. just get hyper stat, which is just like raise one of your stats a crazy amount. So yes. Okay. 
Very good. One thing you're going to find when you're playing with the random rolls in the Ultimate Powers Guide is that there are so many that some of the powers you would think is just like normal. You should probably have these kind of powers when you're playing superheroes like flight. You have like a less than one in a hundred chance of getting something like that. Well, yeah, because yeah. first you have to roll what category of power and then you're going to roll within that category. Yeah, oh and travel God. powers are just like rolling 91 through double zero or something like that. So <laughs> worse, 93 <laughs> through double zero. Yeah, so <laughs> you end up with a lot of characters that you, you end up with a very rarely flying team. <laughs> Amazing. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Um, That... This game is a game <laughs> that people have played and somebody um, sure did write that down there, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff and John are delightful as, as usual. And this game is, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, out there. it's interesting. Yeah. Um, honestly, uh, we love random tables. Uh, and true, true. this game sure has a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. It probably wouldn't have been as traumatizing if I hadn't rolled what I rolled right away. You were warned. I I, I understand that I did this to myself. <laughs> and, um, I feel uh, like this is one of those where you're like in a group session, and you're like trying to find a nice thing to say about it. And you were like, it was in a book. <laughs> it was in <laughs> they, a book. They sure did get that published, didn't they? They, they um, really did. But as usual, there's no one that I would prefer to have on to discuss these kinds of games than Jeff and John. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I know that this is this is what they do, um, but they're always so much fun to talk to and they always have so much insight on why things are like that in these kinds of games. Yeah. And, um, you know, like what kind of trends these games started and, mm -hmm. you know, where things change. It's, it's always a fun conversation with them. So Yeah, absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, you, you could almost say that they have some sort of system m mastery. And as I tell you every time, you could say that, <laughs> but you wouldn't, right? <laughs> right? This is just hypothetical. We're hypothetically. Just hypothetically talking Somebody right could yep. say that, yep. Mm -hmm. Somebody could mm -hmm. say that, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's get to some calls to action uh, before everybody leaves. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> before all our listeners abandon us. <laughs> We had a good run, Ryan. We, we had a good run at N10-4. <laughs> <laughs> um, a quick reminder to check out the two games that we recently covered on Spotlight Episodes last month uh, that are now crowdfunding still. Uh, Yazeba's Bed and Breakfast and Deimos Academy. Um, both are out there. We have links in the show notes for those we are taking questions for a special anniversary Q&A episode that we'd like to do. We did one after our first anniversary, but we haven't directly taken questions since then. So we'd love to hear from you. We will put a link to our Google form in our show notes. Uh, we'll also make sure that we post it on Twitter and in our Discord. If people want to leave us some questions, we'd really love to answer them. Do a little mm -hmm. mailbag episode for our anniversary. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you want another look at what's changed since the beginning, you can always go back and check out our re-recording of our episode zero that is at the top of our feed. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of fun looking back at what we thought the show was going to be versus where it is now. Um, mm -hmm. Things that have changed in our own personal styles. Um, we just, we had a really good time re-recording that one, and I'm I'm much yeah. happier with what's in the feed now than mm -hmm. what was there before. So yeah, it it definitely sounds like we are human beings talking to one another in in a way that we uh, we actually know each other. Yeah. Well, the other one is like we could have recorded separately and like just been yep. reading a script or something. I don't know. We just <laughs> we've grown a lot in four years, as you would hope anybody would do. Mm -hmm. So. Um, definitely, if you haven't checked out our re-recording of uh, episode zero, there's a lot more content. We didn't just like go through and redo mm -hmm. the audio or anything. It's a full new episode. So Absolutely. go check that out um, and then check the show notes for the Google link. Absolutely. Uh, we are still in need of reviews as well. Uh, we've been so grateful for the amazing things people have said about the show over the years. Uh, and we would love to read more in the future. Uh, you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts, uh, aka iTunes, 
uh, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, Facebook, uh, not Stitcher anymore. Nope. Uh, don't even go there because... Because uh, you can't. I mean, you, you can't, can't go there if you want, but you're, it's going to be a waste of your time. For leaving a review, yes. Right. Uh, yeah. For the most part. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, goodness. Uh, there's only a few places to leave reviews. If there's any niche places that you know of that you can leave reviews and you have left a review there, let us know. Because uh, otherwise we will probably not find it. Mm-hmm. And we would like to find it so that we can read it. Mm-hmm. And feel great. And like feel they great. make us feel amazing every single time we get one of those reviews. And uh, they always brighten our days. So yeah. uh, if, if you want to like a, a free gift that you can send our way, leave a review. Absolutely. Uh, You can also check out our recent bonus episode where I sit in a closet on the floor with my children and then struggle to get back (laughs) up again afterwards. Um, But we also make characters for the game Weird Scouts, um, which was a lot of fun. It's it's interesting to listen to that one compared to the one that we did several years ago when we did No Thank You Evil. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. They've grown up a lot and we had a good time. So that is over in the one shot Patreon feed. Uh, you can become a patron at the $5 level to get access to that one over at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you all so much for sticking with us uh, both through this game uh, <laughs> and the last four years. Uh, we will be back next week with more character creation. Um, and until then, be safe, drink some water, get vaccinated, relax those shoulders and keep making those amazing people. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Campaign. Campaign is an actual play podcast exploring lawn form role playing. The current campaign, Skyjacks, takes place in an original setting inspired by the music of the Decemberists, folk tales, and classic adventure fiction. Join Liz Anderson, John Patrick Cohen, Tyler Davis, Johnny O'Mara, and Game Master James D'Amato as they tell a tale of daring sky pirates. Also, it's basically an elaborate retelling of Weekend at Bernie's. Just search for Campaign or James D'Amato on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.